everyone, Charles Wallingford back again with another top 10 list, and this is my intermediate luxury top 10. Top 10 intermediate luxury, that's a mouthful. This list I decided to make because uh, I only had three last year, and now that I'm changing things around a little bit to make things a little bit more, I guess, understandable on why I would put pit one brand with another uh, or against the, another it didn't make sense for a lot of you and I wanted to make it more have have more sense and I believe by having more categories they make more sense uh, a perfect example um, Tudor Tudor really doesn't or shouldn't be compared to last year I had it in, in the mid mid range is comparing to all those brands in the mid-range, including Rolex. So Tudor and Rolex shouldn't be compared against each other or pe uh, pitted against each other, but they were. This list won't be the same, and no, of course, there's no Rolex. Rolex sh shouldn't be on this list at all. All right, let's go ahead and get this started with our top 10. Starting off number 10, Seiko. When Seiko decides to do something, they do it very well. At this level, Seiko offers the famed high beat movement in their Prospect Diver models. Problem though, Seiko did not or does not do much past diver watches on this level. Number nine, Raymond Weil. Never very popular in the eye outside of watch collecting, but one of my longtime favorites with their Nabucco chronographs. Unfortunately, new Nabucco's are not available these days. Luckily, the freelancers pick up the piece as well. Number eight, Ball Watch Company. This brand is one of the many reasons why I decided to construct this list with quality in manufacturing, horological significance, and original designs, it outperforms a few brands on the mid-level list. Number seven, Longines. Longines offers quite a wide assortment of looks and styles when it comes to this level, from the Master Collection, Conquest Classic, and Heritage. The problem with this level, the higher you go up in cost, the desire for ownership goes down. Number six, Tag Heuer. As I explained previously on my top 10 entry level luxury list, Tag Heuer has stepped up their quality. They are not all marketing. At this level, they produce a respectful assortment of lines such as the Carrera and Aqua Racer in caliber 16. Number five, Breitling. Sure, they have the prestige, the history, the attractive iconic cases, and the marketing. But to be higher on this list, Breitling would have to offer more in selection. Though very desirable, most of the watches on this level, be it the Coat or the Super Ocean, don't offer a look or style that is much different from watch to watch. Number four, Nomos Glashütte. Many brands on this list historically have outsourced their movements, leaving a select few models to be in-house movement recipients. Well, for Nomos, you will get in-house movement in every model. Nomos designs are very German, meaning very subdued and understated, but their dial colors tend to make up for this. Number three, Baume Mercier. Since 1830, Baume Mercier have been creating fine timepieces. These days, they have been making what I call the intermediate watch far better than most. The, the Clifton and the Capelin line give any watch on this list a run for their money. I think the, Ca the Capelin Shelby is calling my name. Number two, Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc watches, unfortunately or fortunately, has become more popular than their famed pens. 
Much like their pens, their craftsmanship and attention to detail is second to none on this list. So why number two? They fall short on prestige and movement. Not being around as long and not having their own COC, COSC movement on this level knocks them down just slightly. Nevertheless, Mont Blanc is an impressive timepiece to own. Check out the 4810s, Heritage and Heritage Ultra Slim. Number one, Tudor. Tudor will always be Rolex's little sister, but Tudor these days stands on her own, strong and proud. The days of being a diet Rolex with the Tudor Submariner, the Tudor Tiger Prince, the Tudor Datejust are over. With Pelagos, Fast Rider, Grand Tour Flyback, and many other fantastic lines, Tudor is the best in this price range, bar none. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the list. I hope you enjoyed that list. I hope you uh, saw some watches or some brands that you might want to pay attention to. Again, I always say on these list videos, please leave a comment saying what you would, how you would rearrange this list or what uh, brands I may have left off. If you're, if, if this is your first time watching my videos, please subscribe. And if you did like this video, hit the like button. If you liked it, you might as well uh, share it. I'm Charles Wallingford, and any one of these watch brands, I would love to spend my money on.